I think of this practitioner as indeed a high king of heaven, a sage with great wisdom. And this morning he's going to bring some of that wisdom with you and to you. May I invite you to put your hands together and welcome practitioner Vance Gardner to the podium. Thank you, Sandra. I have to get myself grounded after that introduction. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the psalmist in Psalm 121 contemplates and asks, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help? The, the psalmist continues, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Good morning, Temple of Light. Morning. And bless up everyone in the sanctuary, and blessings to everyone joining us online or in consciousness. Welcome to our heart, and today's celebration of this thing called life, love, light, the one the all-knowing presence, which I call Jah, and which most people call God. Reverend David, Alex, Dr. David Alexander, spiritual director of S Spiritual Living Center Atlanta and chair of the Leadership Council of S Centers for Spiritual Living, writing, in his monthly column in the Science of Mind magazine of August this year, tells us there was a time when he felt overwhelmed with some major life shores and he was afraid to make the wrong decisions. And he would meet each moment, as he puts it, in a mind that was stuck in I don't know. He went on to state that he had a mentor who would ask a simple question. Suppose you did know, what would you do? He related how he would go back and forth with his mentor until he relented. But once he was quiet and still, he found an inner wisdom something that did know. Yes, my friends, there is an inner wisdom within each one of us, something that knows and know that it knows. For many of us, as Carl Jung, the famous Swiss psychiatrist calls the you that you do not know, something within knows the Lord that made heaven and the earth. Yes, God knows. I know and acknowledge that in the human condition, suffering, poverty, unhappiness, war, and discord of every nature is the experience of billions of people. And mankind has been searching for answers, but a coin lost in the river can only be found in the river as the Zen Kun imparts this obvious truth. Isaiah 53 verse 6 tells us that we like sheep has gone astray and each one has turned to his own way. Uh, but 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9 tells us, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, that which in part disappears. Unfortunately, most of us have internalized a consciousness of separation, where, as Bob Marley puts it, most people think great God will come from the sky, take away everything, and make everybody feel high. 
He goes on in that song to chant that Almighty God is alive in man. And if you know what life is worth, you would look for yours on earth. And now we we'll see the light, you know, stand up for our rights. And that is in Get, get Up, Stand Up uh, by Bob Marley and Peter Tush. The founder of this teaching, Signs of Mind and Spirit, Ernest Holmes, reminds us that the divine will for our lives is only good and all that is good. And all that is good that we can embody, that's the divine will for our lives. And there are many ways what we call the world seeks to hypnotize us into fear, lack, limitation, and scarcity. But through this teaching and other inspired teachings, practices, and works, we will overcome. One of the elders of our teaching, Reverend William Hornaday, in an article titled, Can We Talk to God, asks, could we recognize anything unless that something within us which recognized existed before the thing which is recognized? <laughs> it takes some thought, doesn't it? Dr. Carol Carnes, in an article titled On Proving God with Love, which was shared with me by Reverend Michael Record, also asks, how could sentient form arise if not from the semen, not from the sentient formless? Yeah. Therefore, my friends, that which is omniscience, which created us out of itself and in its image and likeness as speakers from this platform has been reminding us, it must have given us the capacity to be omniscient. Yet each of us think our load is the heaviest, as Bob Marley sings again, but something inside us know the solution. God knows the solution. And we will know when we realize that not only does God know the solution, but God is the solution. And from the recognition that there is no separation, there is no God and us, but only God as us, from this consciousness, we will know that we are our own solutions. I know my brothers and sisters, some may be thinking, how does this affect the price of sugar? How will this help me pay my bills? Some may even be thinking that this pandemic, this pandemic is destroying my marriage and what is going to happen to my children's education. Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote the series of books called Conversations with God, tells of a time when he too would ask the God of his past consciousness these questions. He tells of a time when he would write about all that troubled him and ask questions of that God that was somewhere out there. But something mysterious began happening as he was venting by journaling unintentionally. He recognized that as he continued to write, he was also writing out the answers to the very questions that concerned him. And that these answers were there all along awaiting his recognition. The answers to the questions that concerned him were not on Google or in books written by various experts and authorities on these subjects because they only know in part and they may help to some extent, but God knows and therefore, my friends, the answers are within.
Walsh says that he got his answers by the practice of automatic writing, or what we call in this teaching, writing from a stream of consciousness. In our journals, we can ask ourselves any question that deeply concerns us and enter into the stillness, we write whatever comes to us without any conscious deliberation on our part. Many artists and even Einstein would tell us that this is how the mystical revelation of their great works came to them. Walsh advised people to get a pad and write down a question when we go to sleep. Just write down a question and let it go at that. Put the pen down, put the paper down, put down the writing implements on a nightstand next to you. And when you arise in the morning, before you do anything else, even before you go and do any of the bathroom things or the kitchen things or anything like that, probably just after you have prayed, as give yourself three or four minutes, pick up the yellow pad, pick up the pen, and start writing the first thing that comes to your mind. It will amaze you. And in many instances, it will shock you what has been waiting there for you, awaiting your recognition. <coughs> Ernest Holmes in an article in the August edition of the Sands of Mind magazine titled, Put God to Work in Your Experience, he tells about a man whose business was failing. He and his partners tried everything they could think of and still there was no success. He asked to be given a week before they would make their final decision. Holmes wrote that he kept his mind in a receptive mood with one thought in mind. Divine intelligence within me knows what to do. Let us repeat that. Divine intelligence within me knows what to do. And for those online, if you feel so moved, you can write it in the chat. Divine intelligence within me knows what to do. The ideas that came to him in his meditation was, were so clear and definite, it was like a chart they could follow. Holmes tells us, and although some were skeptical, they said they had nothing to lose. So they applied these ideas, and in a few months, they were on a sound footing, prosperous and expanding. They were so impressed that it became their habit to gather for meditation to receive divine guidance for their everyday affairs. And the man became a spiritual counselor for business people True is enterprise titled God in Business. <laughs> yeah. So God is not only omniscience, it is omnipresence. There is nowhere where God is not. We only have to take a breath, pause, and center ourselves, or say a prayer to access this inner wisdom. Last month, several days after I delivered the encouragement during our Independence Day service, I was wondering, what would I speak about today? So I did what I usually do. I made myself receptive to what comes to me and which resonates with me. Practitioner Steve Golden sent me a video on WhatsApp, and after watching it, I exclaim, Jano, <laughs> which led to the title of today's encouragement, 
God knows. It was a clip of an interview done on a morning show which is aired on Television Jamaica called Smile Jamaica. You can find this clip on YouTube by searching for Exam Relief Aid Jamaica. In this episode, streamed on my birthday, July 28th, the hosts, Simone Cooper and Delia Harris, interviewed Malachi Allwood, the founder of Exam Relief Aid. I want you now to listen to Malachi as he speaks about what he and other students have been going through in this special time. Life as we know it, school as we know it, having to quarantine, settle with classes online, that's just been a rigorous journey. And I must applaud our students locally. I must applaud our youth for standing up and pivoting, not just adapting, but pivoting. And um, I think one of the griefs of this pandemic has provided us is perspective. Perspective that there is possibilities and that we can still triumph and do our exams is just amazing. Wow, 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 wow. Malachi, I know Malachi is a fartist man. So. <laughs> <laughs> As I listen, I recognize that this youth has an expanded consciousness. They then asked him how was he able to launch an initiative to not only help his fellow students at KC, but over 3,000 exam students throughout Caribbean, his response blew me away. Observing the staggering statistics of youth disproportionately affected and not having access to quality education, I saw, I see myself as a solution. I see youth, I see our students having an active role and a responsibility to play in helping our fellow peers, helping ourselves and just passing on and empowering others. So it's not just what do I want to do, it's who do I want to be. Waking up, showing up, empowering others, and this in initiative has done that. I see myself as a solution. Whoa, whoa. Ernest Holmes on page 423 in the science of mind textbook wrote, I would rather see a student of this science prove its principle than to have him repeat all the words of wisdom that has been uttered. Malachi is that type of student. That is why we do what we do at Temple to awaken everyone to this consciousness which knows that God is the solution. I am one with God. I am the solution. I don't know if you want me to just repeat that. God is the solution. God is the solution. I am one with God. I am one with God. I am the solution. I just love how that musical mystic that I call Stevie Wonderful expresses these ideas. This is so poetic. Lonely one of young, so broken hearted, traveling down the rigid road of life, using pharmaceutical extractions to find that paradise finds the high but comes feeling down feeling low get down on their knees and starts to pray looking up to heaven for the answer 
they hear a voice that says, you will know. Troubled heart, you will know. Problems have solutions. Trust, and I will show. Oh, oh, you will know. Troubled heart, you will know. Every life has a reason for I made it so. And so it is. Namaste. Powerful words, Vance. Powerful, powerful words, Vance. God in me knows. God is a solution. I am an expression of God. So I am the solution. Definitely words we can take into our week, take into any circumstance. Thank you again, Vance. Let's give him another round of applause.